Hi, I'm Dr. Catherine. Campraxis is a science specialized center for IGCSE and A level. Let's start our experiment now. Hello, welcome from Campraxis. In this video, we'll be covering question 3 from May June 2022, paper 3, variant 1. In this question, we'll be carrying out qualitative analysis. We'll be starting with part A. FA5 is an ionic solid containing two ions. It contains one or more ions that contain nitrogen. The possible ions would be ammonium ion, nitrate ion, and nitrite ion. We'll carry out tests to identify the N ion. We'll reserve a small amount of FA5 for use in A2. The test for nitrate or nitrite ions will have to add aluminum foil to warm FA5 and sodium hydroxide. However, before adding the aluminum foil, we heat some FA5 with sodium hydroxide and we'll test for ammonia gas. This test is carried out to ensure that if any ammonia gas is being released in the second test, it will be due to the nitrate and nitrite ions, not because of the ammonium ion. First, we'll warm the FA5 with some sodium hydroxide solution. You will see that after heating, the litmus paper still stays red. Now, we'll add in a piece of aluminum foil. Use a glass rod to push the aluminum foil into the solution. Make sure to move the test tube away from the fire when the solution is about to spill out. The ammonia gas produced turns the red lamus paper blue. Record all the observations in the table. For the first test, no gas is being produced so you know that the ammonium ion is not present. In the second test, ammonia gas is being produced indicating that nitrate or nitrate ions are present. To identify whether the N ion present is nitrate or nitrite, we'll add some acidified potassium manganate solution. Now we'll be adding some acidified potassium manganate solution to some FA5 in a test tube. The purple color is not decolorized. The solution does not decolorize the purple acidified potassium magnet solution, so we'll know that the nitrate ion is present. Now we'll proceed to question A2. Need a small spatula of FA5 in a hard glass test tube. When no further changes occur, allow the test tube and its contents to cool completely. Recall all your observations. At first, the solid has melted and some bubbling will be observed. Effervescence is also released. After a few minutes of heating, some brown gas is produced. The oxygen gas produced relaxes the glowing skin. The nitrogen dioxide gas release turns the blue litmus paper red. Upon cooling, there will be some pale yellow residue left in the test tube. Now you can record all your observations in the space provided. The brown gas produced is nitrogen dioxide. Now we'll move on to part B. FA6 is a solution of a compound containing one cation and one anion, both of which are in the qualitative analysis notes. FA7 is an aqueous mixture of two substances. FA7 contains one potassium containing compound and one other substance. All substances are listed in the qualitative analysis notes. We'll carry out the following test and complete the table. First, we'll add sodium hydroxide solution to FA6. When sodium hydroxide is added dropwise, a white precipitate forms. The white precipitate is soluble in excess sodium hydroxide solution. Now, we'll add sodium hydroxide solution to FA7. When sodium hydroxide solution is added, the yellow color is decolorized. Now we'll add barium nitrate solution to FA6. When barium nitrate is added, a white precipitate forms. The white precipitate indicates that sulfate, sulfite, or carbonate ions might be present. 
Now we'll add hydrochloric acid to Fe6. The water precipitate is insoluble in dilute hydrochloric acid. Now we'll add some hydrochloric acid to the Fe7. When hydrochloric acid is added, no changes occur. Now we'll add some starch to Fe7. A blue-black precipitate forms. This indicates that iodine is present. Now we'll be adding some sodium sulfate to Fe7. After adding sodium sulfate, a colorless solution is formed. First, we'll be adding some silver nitrate to Fe6. When silver nitrate is added, no changes occur. This indicates that halide ions are not present. Now we'll add some sodium hydroxide solution to Fe6. When sodium hydroxide solution is added, a brown precipitate forms. Now we'll add some silver nitrate to Fe7. When silver nitrate is added, a yellow precipitate forms. Now we'll add some sodium hydroxide solution to Fe7. After sodium hydroxide solution is added, the color of the precipitate turns lighter. Now we'll be adding aqueous ammonia to Fe6. When aqueous ammonia is added dropwise, a white precipitate forms. The white precipitate is insoluble in excess. All your observations should be recorded in the table. If you look at test 2, when barium nitrate is added to Fe6, a white precipitate forms. This indicates that sulfate, sulfide, or carbonate ions are present. However, when dilute hydrochloric acid is added, the precipitate is insoluble. This indicates that sulfide ions are not present. Carbonate ions are also not present because it would have caused some gas bubbles being produced when dilute hydrochloric acid is added. We can conclude that sulfate ion is present in Fe6. Moving on to test 3, the starch added to Fe7 gives a blue-black precipitate, showing us that iodine is present. However, when sodium thiosulfate is added, a colorless solution forms, because the thiosulfate ion will react with the iodine to form iodide ions. Moving on to test 4, when silver nitrate is added to Fe6, no precipitate forms, indicating that halide ions are not present. However, when silver nitrate is added to Fe7, a yellow precipitate forms, indicating that iodide ions are present. For the last test, when aqueous ammonia is added to Fe6, a white precipitate forms and it is insoluble in excess ammonia. Referring to your qualitative analysis notes, this will tell us that aluminium ions are present. Now we can conclude that Fe6 contains aluminium sulfate and Fe7 contains iodine and potassium iodide. We can record the formula of Fe6 and Fe7 in the space below. Moving on to question 3, give the ionic equation for one of the reactions taking place in test 1. For test 1, we've added sodium hydroxide solution to Fe6 and Fe7. For Fe6, the aluminum ion reacts with the hydroxide ions to form aluminum hydroxide solid. For Fe7, the aqueous iodine has reacted with the hydroxide ion to form iodide ions, iodide ions, and water. Now we're done with part B and this will be the end of question 3.